Hello friends, this is a crash course series and it is assumed that student has undergone various details of the subject and this is just the quick revision of the facts. So let's begin with biochemistry. We have anabolic reactions and catabolic reactions that occur in the biochemistry. Anabolic means something is forming or it is synthesis of something. While on the other hand, when I say catabolic reaction, it means that something is breaking down. So in case of anabolic reaction, when we eat in the fed state, so when we eat, it is called fed state. We put food in the body and this food is stored in the form of glycogen, also in the form of fats. So synthesis takes place. So that is an anabolic reaction or anabolic pathway when something is synthesizing. Catabolic reaction, on the other hand, it is breakdown. So in fasting or in starvation, when there is no food but body need energy to continue. So the food is or the energy source is broken down. The stored material such as glycogen, it is broken down to give energy. So that these all are the catabolic pathways. So let's start with uh, anabolic pathways or anabolic enzymes. The anabolic pathway is glycogen. Glycogen acids. That means if you see this is glycogen. Acids means it is formation. So formation of the glycogen. So synthesis of the glycogen takes place in glycogenesis. Now next one is HMP shunt which is known as hexose monophosphate pathway. Another name for HMP shunt is pentose phosphate pathway. So triple P. So there is synthesis of two things that occur in HMP shunt. One is ribose 5-phosphate and another one is NADPH. So that is why since, since there is synthesis of ribose 5-phosphate and we have NADPH formation, that is why HMP shunt is also anabolic pathway, fatty acid synthesis, cholesterol synthesis and triglyceride synthesis. So all are synthesis of fats that is lipogenesis, lipid, lipid word means fat and genesis means formation or synthesis so it is lipogenesis. Now lipoprotein lipase as the name suggests ACE that means it is an enzyme. This enzyme is present in the endothelium of the blood vessels. So we have peripheral tissues like adipose tissue that are present in the sites of the blood vessels. So lipoprotein lipase is an enzyme that break down the triglyceride into uh, basically this triglyceride is also lipoprotein into fatty acids and glycerol. So this happens in the blood vessel. Now the fatty acid and glycerol these are the small molecules of fat and they can enter into the peripheral tissue now. So these fatty acid and glycerol again goes into peripheral tissues, adipose tissues Again, they join to form the triglycerides in the peripheral tissues or in the adipose tissue. Hence, triglycerides are stored in adipose tissue and therefore we can say lipoprotein lipase is an anabolic enzyme. So, it has an anabolic role in the body. Now, coming to the cat catabolic pathways. We have catabolic pathways such as glycolysis. So, glycolysis means there is lysis of glycogen. So there is breakdown of glycogen into pyruvate and this uh, cycle is known as or this synthesis is known as glycolysis. It is not a synthesis, it is the breakdown of glucose to give energy. Then this reaction glycolysis, it continues to the link reaction and then we have a TCA cycle. So the pyruvate that is formed from the glycolysis then which is a 3 carbon compound. So you can see glucose which is a 6 carbon compound. It gives a 3 carbon compound with the glycolysis. So there is breakdown occurring, breakdown of the carbon atom occurring and that is why it is a catabolic reaction. So glycolysis is a catabolic reaction and since there is 6 carbon compound breaking down into 3 carbon comp compound and then this 3 carbon compound which is pyruvate break down into 2 carbon compound which is acetyl-CoA. And this reaction is known as link reaction. Why we call it link reaction? Because it is a reaction between glycolysis and TC which is the citric acid cycle and the enzyme is pyruvate dehydrogenase and therefore we call it py pyruvate dehydrogenase reaction so pyruvate get converted to acetyl-CoA in link reaction 
another one is glycogenolysis so we can see glycogen and there is lysis of the glycogen so there is breakdown of the glycogen and glycogenolysis then beta oxidation of fatty acid so there is breakdown of fatty acid that is occurring oxidation of fatty acid again it is a breakdown so a catabolic reaction next one is gluconeogenesis now there is a formation of glucose from a non carbohydrate source you will be telling ma'am this is a synthesis it is not a synthesis because in case of fasting or starvation when there is no food in the body the uh, body has no energy source so it takes source from non carbohydrate so it is a breakdown which gives energy it never occur in the fed state therefore gluconeogenesis is again a catabolic reaction so it occurs in the fasting or starvation ketone body synthesis and ketone body utilization so ketone bodies again are formed by the liver and during starvation so mainly brain and heart they have no source of energy when glucose is not there in starvation or in case of um, fasting so in this situation heart needs to pump brain needs to work and therefore we need some other source apart from glucose and that is why ketone bodies are formed in the body or they are utilized in the body when there is fasting or starvation when there is no other source so brain and heart uses ketone body because glucose can be emptied down so that is why we have ketone body so ketone bodies is formed during starvation but it is mainly used by heart and brain so since it is used during starvation it is a catabolic reaction it break down and forms the energy one enzyme which is a catabolic which is hormone sensitive lipase now this hormone sensitive lipase is present in the adipose tissue so in the adipose tissue the triglyceride which has come from the blood now this triglyceride break break down into three fatty acids and glycerol now this which goes into the blood again and from blood they are taken by the liver where beta oxidation of fatty acid occur and therefore this triglyceride is breaking down into fatty acid and glucose that is why hormone sensitive lipase hsl it is a catabolic reaction it is a catabolic enzyme now stored triglyc triacyl glycerol and cholesterol which is basically a triglyceride are released by hormone sensitive lipase these enzymes are present uh, hormone sensitive lipase are present inside the cells of the adipose tissue and triglyceride in the adipose tissues are broken down by the uh, hormone sensitive lipase into uh, three fatty acid and glycerol and um, then from here it goes into the blood into the circulation and it is taken up by the liver where beta oxidation of fatty acid occurs now coming to insulin insulin receptor is it is a tetrameric glycoprotein and now we have two hormones one is insulin and another one is glucagon now you need to understand both of these hormones first so we know the function of insulin is it takes up glucose from the blood takes it into the liver that is insulin is like a dad it uh, orders glucose to go from blood to liver and therefore when we eat food insulin is released so that the glucose which is present in the blood in more amount it can go into the liver and it can form the glycogen now the another hormone it is glucagon it has the opposite action it gives glucose or releases glucose into the blood into the circulation now in the fed state when we consume carbohydrate we eat food that is glucose insulin is released and insulin activate all the anabolic pathways so that we can store the food and anabolic enzyme especially the regulatory enzymes of the anabolic pathway is released via the insulin but apart from all the anabolic pathways insulin activates two catabolic pathway also so glycolysis which is going to break the glucose into pyruvate it occurs with the help of insulin apart from that i told you two catabolic reaction there is exception to otherwise insulin has a anabolic role it stores the takes the glucose from the blood and stores in form of uh, glycogen but here we have two catabolic that occurs because of the insulin one is glycolysis and the another one is a link reaction which is conversion of this pyruvate which is formed from the glucose with the help of glycolysis 
so gluco in in the glycolysis glucose is formed into pyruvate which is the end product of the glycol glycolysis in case of aerobic state in anaerobic we have lactate so aerobic which is in presence of oxygen so glucose is converted to pyruvate and this pyruvate further continues to form two carbon compound which is acetyl coa this acetyl coa conversion of pyruvate to acetyl coa occurs with the help of pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme and that is why this reaction is also known as pyruvate dehydrogenase complex reaction and also the link reaction because it is a link between glycolysis and tca cycle which is also known as the citric acid cycle so we have insulin uh, which has a anabolic role apart from that only two catabolic reaction one is glycolysis and another one is link reaction now talking about glucagon it activates all the catabolic pathway because it will break down and give energy it will release glucose or break down and give energy so glucagon activates all the catabolic pathways and enzymes but it will not activate two catabolic which are again which is because of the insulin uh, glycolysis and the link reaction so except we have glycolysis and link reaction and link reaction since insulin is an anabolic hormone so it stores everything in the body and the patient who are taking insulin injection for many years they have large abdominal circumference so they have a fat belly which can lead to weight gain or obesity which can be because of the insulin consumption insulin regulates the fatty acid synthesis because insulin is responsible for the fatty acid synthesis also since i told you insulin is, is responsible for all the anabolic that is the synthesis pathway it forms the fatty acid and therefore patient taking insulin for years they can be uh, they can be having the obesity so it regulates the fatty acid synthesis by the enzyme acetyl coa carboxylase what are the effect of insulin uh, the insulin has all the anabolic except to one is glycolysis glycolysis and another one is link reaction apart from that all the anabolic so we will write one two and three which is all the anabolic and these were the two catabolic right so now talking about glycolysis which is exception to catabolic it increases the effect of insulin glycogenesis glycogen is formed here again anabolic increases lipogenesis lipid is formed again anabolic increases triglyceride synthesis fat synthesis which is increasing protein synthesis again anabolic increases hmp shunt also gives two things which is ribose 5 phosphate and nadph again it is a anabolic so increases now coming to gluconeogenesis it is a catabolic so therefore decreases since it occurs in starvation or fasting glycogenolysis it is a breakdown of glycogen that is why catabolic decreases lipolysis again breakdown of fat decreases and the effect of insulin on protein degradation again decreases because it is a catabolic reaction so glycolysis is conversion of glucose which is a six carbon compound to either pyruvate in presence of oxygen it converts into pyruvate which is a three carbon compound or in absence of oxygen that is anaerobic it forms the lactate with the production of atp in glycolysis which we'll talk in a while gluconeogenesis gluco that means glucose is formed neo means new glucose is formed genesis of new glucose that is from a non carbohydrate source and it is regulated by glucagon of the pancreas since i told you all the catabolic reaction occurs because of the glucagon now here we know gluconeogenesis is occurs during fasting or starvation when there is no glucose in the body and body needs glucose to survive that is why we have non carbohydrate source like amino acid which forms the glucose basically they are giving off energy and this reaction occurs in starvation or in fasting and that is why gluconeogenesis is a catabolic reaction and all the catabolic reactions are regulated by a uh, glucagon now synthesis of glucose or glycogen from the non carbohydrate sources and we have substrates like lactic 
right so we can make glucose from lactate pyruvate and we have glucogenic amino acids uh, we have propionates or you can make uh, glucose from glycerol so these all are the substrates and they can give the glucose in case of gluconeogenesis so gluconeogenesis can be formed from the lactate but it occurs in the skeletal muscle and lactate to glucose this cycle is known as cori cycle which occurs in the skeletal muscle glycogenesis that means formation of the glycogen and this synthesis occurs from the glucose glycogenolysis that means breakdown of the glycogen and the glycogen is broken down into glucose it occurs in liver and muscles now we know the effect of glucagon since glucagon increases the glucose in the blood apart from glucagon we have epinephrine thyroid hormone growth hormone non epinephrine all these hormones will also increase glucose in the blood so they will have same effect like glucagon so all of these hormones are going to increase glucose in the blood and it will activate adeni adenyl cyclase enzyme which will increase the cyclic amp and causes phosphorylation so they can give you question like which of the following enzyme causes phosphorylation and they can give you except a question also now the uh, contradictory hormone we have is the insulin hormone which will take up glucose from the blood and take up into the liver so it will decrease the blood glucose level so there will be less glucose in the blood and it will activate the phosphodiesterase enzyme which will decrease the cyclic amp and it will cause dephosphorylation so the phosphorylation is caused by glucagon growth hormone epinephrine non epinephrine thyroid hormone while on the other hand dephosphorylation occurs by insulin then all the catabolic reactions they occur in mitochondria mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell while on the other hand we have all the anabolic reactions they are the synthesis reaction we need these reaction we need synthesis and there are certain cells which do not have mitochondria such as rbc we still want uh, the reactions that is why you can remember all the anabolic reactions occur in the cytoplasm now all the catabolic pathways are in mitochondria so we have link reaction we have uh, we have a exception also guys here exception to this formula is glycolysis because uh, it occurs in the cytoplasm and glycolysis is very essential because it will break down glucose and give energy since it is a vital reaction and that is why we need this into the cytoplasm apart from that the lysis of the glucose glycogen to form glucose so glycogenolysis is again a reaction that occurs in the cytoplasm so we have two reactions that occur in the cytoplasm one is glucose giving energy another one is glycogen giving glucose giving energy so we have two uh, reactions that is glycolysis and glycogenolysis that occurs in the cytoplasm apart from that all the anabolic reactions occurs in cytoplasm such as such as fatty acid synthesis triglyceride synthesis cholesterol synthesis so these are lipolysis or li sorry these are lipogenesis and then we have hmp shunt which is a anabolic then we have glycogen formation glycogen glycogenesis which is again a an anabolic reaction apart from that the catabolic reactions occurs in the mitochondria such as link reaction which is a pyruvate to acetyl coa which is a 3 carbon to 2 carbon compound link reaction beta oxidation of fatty acid which is a breakdown of fatty acid again a catabolic reaction occur in mitochondria ketone body synthesis ketone body utilization both are catabolic since i told you they occur in fasting or in starvation vital pathways such as tca and etc occurs in mitochondria now we have certain reactions which occur in both mitochondria as well as in the cytoplasm and the three reaction which occurs in both cytoplasm and in mitochondria urea cycle gluconeogenesis formation of glucose from the non carbohydrate source and heme synthesis first reaction enzyme of these pathway occurs in the mitochondria therefore they occur in both mitochondria as well as cytoplasm now coming to the states we have a fed state which occurs within 24 hours of intake of food then we have a fasting state which is lack of food intake and in this 
the food is taken 12 to 20 uh, sorry 12 to 18 hours before uh, the starvation so before fasting we can say we have taken the food 12 to 18 hours prior to that so starvation is lack of food for one to three days if food is not taken for one to three days this condition we call is starvation or the person is starving so in the fed state we put raw material that is food in the body and the synthesis happens so uh, body is getting food and it will start all the formation processes since it is getting energy in the fasting or starvation state when there is no food in the body then the storage food whatever body has stored in form of fats or in form of glycogen it is broken down and it gives off the energy so the preferred main fuel for the body or the preferred fuel for the body is carbs carbs is the first or main preferred fuel for the body then we have fats and the third one is amino acid or proteins then the source of blood glucose what gives blood glucose food gives blood glucose then we have glycogen that are stored in the liver it gives the blood glucose so glycogen gives off glucose and this reaction is known as glycogenolysis so lysis of the glycogen it provides blood glucose for 12 to 18 hours that is during the fasting gluconeogenesis that is formation of the glucose from non-carbohydrate source can be from amino acids remember one thing here i have not written fats remember this fats fat can never provide the glucose though it can provide us energy but it can never provide us glucose the reason behind is that now normally what happens carbs which is we form we take in form of glucose it is broken down into pyruvate and this reaction is known as glycolysis glycolysis and then we have a link reaction this is glucose is a six carbon compound pyruvate is the three carbon compound we have two pyruvate that is formed and then from here we have acetyl coa which is a two carbon compound and this reaction is known as link reaction and from here this acetyl coa can form the fats so there is fat synthesis that occurs after acetyl coa so fat cannot be converted into glucose though glucose can con can be converted to fats but fat cannot be converted to glucose because here we have a link reaction which is a irreversible reaction remember this link reaction is a irreversible reaction and that is the reason we can never convert fats to glucose though fat can give us energy uh, breakdown and give us energy but fat can never be converted to glucose so you have to read the question very carefully what they are asking uh, are they asking about the glucose or energy source but we have two exceptions two exceptions that fat can be broken broken down into glucose that is a glycerol which is a breakdown product of triglyceride and we have propionic acid which is a breakdown product of odd chain fatty acids uh, that can also give us glucose so we have two exceptions to ex two products of the fat that can give us glucose one is glycerol another one is propionic acid now you have to see if this is given in the option then you have to uh, choose very carefully so propionic acid and glycerol they are the product of fat but they can be converted to glucose so here we have an exception and the exception here is propionic acid and glycerol so glycerol 3 phosphate gives uh, dihydroxyacetone phosphate and this dihydroxyacetone phosphate is intermediate in the glycolysis and they can be easily converted to glucose and that is why this glycerol 3 phosphate which is glycerol which is a triglyceride is converted to glucose. Gl uh, we have glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme which takes uh, up this reaction and also this enzyme is involved in glycerol phosphate shuttle now fed state when we are taking a diet we take 60 to 70 percent carbs in our food and we take 15 to 20 percent fats and rest we take protein now the fats which we are taking in the food this fat is the exogenous fat since this fat is coming from outside body is not synthesizing this fat exogenous means coming from the outside 
since this fat is coming from the outside we call it exogenous fat and it is transported in form of chylomicrons lipoprotein so remember this exogenous fat chylomicron is something which we are taking from the outside then uh, only 50% of the carbohydrate gives off energy what about rest 50% of the carbohydrate from the rest 50% of the carbohydrate which you eat in the meal it will convert it will store into 10% into the glycogen which is going to give us food in case of which is going to give us energy or glucose in case of fasting apart from that rest 40% of the carbohydrate is converted to fats and it is stored in form of endogenous fat now this fat body is synthesizing and therefore it is known as endogenous fats and they are stored formed transported inside the body in form of very low density lipoproteins vldl lipoproteins now they can ask you questions such as a person on a fat free diet but carbohydrate rich diet now uh, you know whatever carbohydrate you are taking 50% is giving us energy and 50% of the carbohydrate is stored apart from that 40% is stored as fats so uh, if you are taking a carbohydrate rich diet then you are going to continue to grow obese and which lipoprotein is increased so that means vldl is increased because excess carbo excess carbohydrate is converted into the fats in body and this is known as the endogenous fat and lipoprotein which is increased is very low density very low density lipoproteins so these are bad lipoproteins while on the other hand high density lipoproteins these are good lipoproteins one kind of diet when this person want to lose weight is it can follow person can follow atkins diet so this is a low calorie diet in which the person takes low carbs and this is to reduce the weight thermogenic effect of food which is sda specific dynamic dynamification dy dynamication sorry specific dynamication this is the thermogenic effect of food that means thermogenic effect means amount of energy that is uh, that is required to digest the food not only digest to absorb the food or to transport the food or to metabolize the food into the cells of the body so that is the energy which is known as the sda specific dynamication and uh, or the thermogenic effect of the food so this energy is high for protein and low for fats so we have the sequence such as first is protein then carbs then fats so maximum sda is present for proteins then carbs then fats so we require a very high amount of energy to digest to transport to absorb the proteins and that is why you can say proteins are helpful in weight control or in weight reduction because it requires lot of energy when i say the calorific value or the energy value carbohydrate has 4 kilo calories fat has 9 kilo calories protein has 4 kilo calories and alcohol has 7 kilo calories so in fasting state the main fuel for the body is fats fats it's broken down to give energy in fasting or starvation in the adipose tissue it releases fatty acids so the triglyceride is broken down to give fatty acid and glycerol and these fatty acid are then gone to the blood from the adipose or the peripheral tissues and they fatty acid undergo beta oxidation and releases acetyl coa so this is the reaction is beta oxidation of the fatty acid now from here acetyl coa has three fates either it can enter the tca cycle which is most commonly occurs in case of fed state it occurs in the tca cycle and in fasting state also it can undergo into tca cycle this acetyl coa can be converted to ketone bodies also so this is the main thing that occurs in starvation 
एक्टिवेशन ऑफ द फर्स्ट स्टेप ऑफ अ ग्लूकोनियोजेनेसिस अकर सो एसेटाइल को ए एक्टिवेट्स द फर्स्ट स्टेप ऑफ ग्लूकोनियोजेनेसिस बट नेवर गेट कन्वर्टेड टू ग्लूकोज सो रिमेंबर एसेटाइल को ए नेवर गेट कन्वर्टेड टू ग्लूकोज दो इट कैन इनिशिएट द एक्टिवेट द फर्स्ट स्टेप ऑफ ग्लूकोनियोजेनेसिस नाउ द फेट ऑफ एसेटाइल को ए सर्टन टाइम आस्ट इन द क्वेश्चन in the fed state it is it is used for tca cycle or for the fat synthesis so ketone bodies for fat synthesis then in fasting state it can undergo the tca cycle or activation of the first step of gluconeogenesis gluconeogenesis then in case of starvation it can undergo tca cycle and main is the ketone body synthesis in case of starvation and it can undergo the activation of again first step of gluconeogenesis but less compared to the fasting because the less substrate is left for gluconeogenesis acetyl coa uh, the uh, question that has been asked from acetyl coa is acetyl coa can can be converted to all except so when they give you glucose in the option so it can never be converted to glucose though it can activate the first step of gluconeogenesis but it can never be converted to glucose so that is the option that is the answer glucose is going to the option uh, acetyl coa can never be converted to glucose acetyl coa is the starting material for the fat synthesis as i told you acetyl coa can convert into ketone bodies also so it is the starting material for the synthesis of the fatty acids so in case of starvation now we have talked about in case of fasting now talking about starvation so in case of starvation then when the person is a, a lack of food for 1 to 3 days this condition we call starving and fasting is 12 to 18 hours of lack of food so that is the difference between fasting and starvation when uh, why there is a ketone body formation that occurs during the starvation and ketone body formation occurs because it is the vital source of fuel for brain and heart that is why it is very important to synthesize the ketone bodies because brain and heart requires ketone bodies and if brain and heart only use glucose then they may fail because of lack of glucose in case of starvation so the uh, availability in the body in case of starvation is utilization of ketone bodies and therefore these vital organ like brain and heart needs ketone body muscle can also use ketone bodies now coming to diabetes diabetes is similar to fasting or starvation fasting or starvation so in case because cells are not getting glucose so that is why cells feel that there is a fasting or though there is a lot amount of glucose present in the blood but it is not reaching up to the cells so cells feel like they are fasting or they are starving so that is why all the things that happens in starvation or fasting that occurs in the diabetes and in case of diabetes beta oxidation of fatty acid occur ketone body synthesis and activation of the first step of gluconeogenesis occurs in case of diabetes so there is activation of gluconeogenesis that also occurs in fasting so when there is no food that is starvation or in case of fasting all catabolic reaction occurs because body needs to give glucose or energy so except one anabolic reaction that occurs in the diabetes that is synthesis of fats and the reason i told you acetyl coa get converted to fat because the body needs fat there is excess of acetyl coa that is present in the liver uh, because of the beta oxidation and that are, uh, gives the fat that synthesizes the fat so this acetyl coa is forced to be used for the synthesis of fats in the body in the liver and that is why there is only anabolic reaction that occurs in the diabetes that is fatty acid synthesis or fat synthesis so the endogenous fats are formed so endogenous fats are formed uh, fatty acid are formed endogenous triglyceride are formed and these triglyceride travel in the blood to form vldl so more vldl is found in the lipid profile of the diabetic patient also there is increase in the cholesterol synthesis 
Now respiratory quotient is the carbon dioxide produced divided by oxygen used. So in case of more carbon dioxide production, there is going to be more respiratory quotient. Such as in case of acidosis, there is more carbon dioxide produced. That is why more respiratory quotient. Then in case of fever, again more respiratory quotient. Exercise, more respiratory quotient. In case of alkylosis, when there is more oxygen, if there is more oxygen, that means this ratio will decrease. So respiratory quotient will decrease. The carbs diet has got a respiratory quotient of 1. It has got the maximum as the amount of oxygen used. For carbs is less as compared to the fats. Mixed diet it is 0.85. For protein it is 0.8. For fat it is 0.7. And alcohol 0.66. In the normal state or in the fed state. Body uses carbohydrate mainly. And respiratory quotient is close to 1. In case of diabetes mellitus patient. Which is similar to a condition such as fasting or starvation. Body uses fats mainly because there is more fatty acid synthesis and we know respiratory quotient of fat is less than as compared to that of carbohydrate. For fat it is 0.7, for fat it is 0.7 and for carbohydrate it is 1. So if for fats it is less that is why in case of diabetes mellitus patient the respiratory quotient is going to be less. Uh, and on given insulin, again glucose will enter the cell and therefore respiratory quotient will uh, increase on giving the insulin to diabetic patient. Pyruvate carboxylase is not used, no, sorry, not increased in case of diabetes mellitus as the gluconeogenesis is functional. Untreated diabetes can lead to tissue to use fatty acid as the main fuel. That is why we know diabetes the main source is fatty acids. Ketoacidosis without any glucose urea. You, uh, glucose is not coming into the blood but we have ketoacidosis. So diabetic ketoacidosis is a uh, complication of untreated diabetes. And it is seen in case of prolonged starvation in case of a diabetic patient starvation enzyme level which are increased during starvation that is fatty acid synthesis because in case of starvation there is more fatty acid formation takes place during the starvation which of the following shows the most marked increase in the plasma concentration it is ketone bodies that are formed more during the starvation now coming to the organs use which energy source during fed state, fasting state or starvation state. All the, cell, all the organs in the body in fed state mostly utilize glucose except heart and except heart and brain. So brain also uses glucose for fed state but heart uses fatty acids in case of fed state. So in case of fed state, it is only heart that uses fatty acid. Apart from that, all the organ uses glucose in case of fed state. In fed state, glucose is available to the tissues. But heart is very important. It needs to pump all the time. That is why it is not dependent on glucose. It takes up fatty acid for its functioning. So in fed state, brain uses glucose, liver uses glucose. Muscle uses glucose, adipose tissue uses glucose and RBC uses glucose. Now remember one formula, RBC uses glucose in every state because there is no mitochondria. So in fasting state also it uses glucose as there is no mitochondria for fatty acid utilization. And it uses glucose as there is no mitochondria so cannot use the ketone bodies also. Now in case of fasting state... It almost uses fatty acids and in case of starvation we use ketone bodies or fatty acid. So in case of fasting, F for fasting, F for fatty acid. Fed state we know we have lot of glucose so almost all the tissue except heart uses glucose. In fasting state almost all the tissue uses fatty acid except RBC because there is no mitochondria it will use glucose. But from uh, apart from the RBC, we also have brain that uses glucose in case of the fasting state. So heart we know uses fatty acid. Already 
and uh, fasting state we have all the tissues using fatty acids such as liver using fatty acid muscle using fatty acid adipose tissue using fatty acid but rbc uses glucose in every state starvation we know we have ketone bodies so ketone bodies for brain ketone bodies for heart then liver uses amino acids muscle uses either fatty acid or can use ketone bodies adipose tissue fatty acid and rbc uses glucose because there is no mitochondria so they cannot use the ketone bodies now certain question that have been asked for fetal heart the fuel is glucose in case of heart failure the fuel is glucose now we know heart uses fatty acid during fed as well as during fasting but here in case of heart failure the heart uses glucose rbc always uses glucose in any state retina is completely dependent on the glucose as the fuel source in resting muscle the preferred fuel is fatty acids the major source for heart the major source for heart is fatty acid apart from heart fatty acid is the source for renal cortex as well as the adipose tissues so fatty acid is the source for heart renal cortex and adipose tissue heart uses with source of energy during starvation see, see heart uses fatty acids heart uses fatty acid for fed state fatty acid for fasting but heart uses ketone bodies for starvation and which ketone bodies mainly acetoacetate